All right, in this example, we're gonna walk you through an adjusting trial balance. I know we didn't cover that really, the walkthrough of it in this section, but that's why we have this example. So in this example, I'm gonna walk you through exactly what it will look like. And then hopefully at the end of this, you kind of know what an adjusting trial balance is going to look like at the end of the day. So uh, assume company A had the following unadjusted balances prior to preparing the adjusting trial balance, adjusting entry that you did in example one. So in example one, we actually did four entries. Those entries are the adjustments. Those are the four adjustment entries that you learn in this section. Now, in this example, we're gonna take this trial balance and we're gonna roll this forward based on the adjusting trial balances that we, based on the adjustments that we did in the last section. So that's what we're doing here. Now, this is the only time you're gonna have this trial balance available to you, at least as we go through forward on the next couple of slides here. So you may wanna take a picture of it uh, if you just wanna have it as reference because all the numbers that we're gonna be using come from here and the adjusting entries that we did in example one. So take that picture and let's go forward into uh, what we know. So using the adjusted journal entries, we call them AGE. So if you hear AJE, that's adjusting entry. From example one, prepare the adjusted trial balance. So here's the adjusting entries that we did in the last section or the last uh, example. And so what we're gonna do is we're just going to do exactly what we're supposed to do. So once we do the adjusting journal entries, we need to post them to the T. Once we post them to the T, then we can use the numbers that we've uh, accumulated to prepare the adjusting entry. So here we go, entry number one uh, is what we're gonna start with here. We've got a debit to insurance expense and a credit to prepaid insurance for $695. Notice down here, I've got the T accounts, I've got prepaid insurance, and I've got insurance expense. So in this case here, we are going to debit left-hand side the insurance expense for $695. And then um, I'll put AJE1. And then on the prepaid insurance, we credited that account for $695. So I'll credit it $695 with an AJE1. I don't think I'm gonna fit that, so I might not put that anymore. But anyways, that's what it looks like there so now we need to total these up so to total up we total all the debits columns all the credit columns then we get that total we subtract the higher number from the lower number and then whatever the results are we'll put on the higher side so in this case 695 plus 695 gives us 1390 1390 minus zero on the credit side gives us 1390 on the debit side the 13 90. On the prepaid insurance, we have a bigger, higher side on the left-hand side. We have a, uh, a smaller number on the right-hand side. We don't need to add because we just have one number to deal with. So 2,780 minus 695 gives us 2,085. And that's going to go on the left-hand side, the smaller side. So that's what our balances look like after this first journal entry. Let's go ahead and move on to the second journal entry. For the second journal entry, we've got a debit to accounts receivable for 5,220. So that would go to the left side of the accounts receivable T. So 5,220 on the left hand side. On the right hand side is going to be the service revenue. So the re service revenue is a credit right hand side. We're going to put 5,220 there. So now we can go ahead and add up all of our columns. So in this case, we'll add up all the debits to our, our accounts receivable account. If we do that, 5,220 plus 6,380 gives us $11,600. On the service revenue on the right hand side, we're going to get 6,380 plus 5,220. It also gives us $11,600. Dollar. So they're the same because, well, they are just the same here. Now you might go, where's the beginning balance coming from? The beginning balance comes from the unadjusted trial balance. So um, right here, if you notice, accounts receivable 6,380. If I go back to our adjust, unadjusted trial balance and I go to accounts receivable, I get 6,380. Our sales revenue started at 
6,380, so 6,380. So if you're a little confused on where those BBs are, BB means beginning balance, that comes from the unadjusted trial balance. So from the unadjusted trial balance, we post the adjusting trial balance, then we get the totals, and then that's what's gonna help us prepare the adjusted trial balance. So moving forward here to example three. In example three, we've got a debit to deferred revenue, so left-hand side of five, uh, 2,520. So 2,520. And then on the service revenues, we did have an AGE-1 where we cr accredited service revenues of 5,220, sorry, AG-2. 5,220, so we need to add to it, it looks like revenues of 2520. So 2520 will go on the right hand side. So now we can do the adds and subtraction. So on the deferred revenue, the bigger number is on the right hand side, smaller numbers on the left hand side, so the bigger number minus the smaller number, so 3,600 uh, minus 2,500. 20 gives us 1080 on the right hand side, the bigger side. And then on the service revenue, we'll take 6,380 plus 5,220 plus 2520 gives us $14,120 on the right hand side. So that's what our service revenue is now that we've updated for AGE 3. All right, moving into the last one, AG, AJ. E4, we've got a debit to utilities expense. Utilities expense is on the left-hand side. So we are going to debit 6272. And then accounts payable is on the right-hand side. We're gonna credit the accounts payable account for that same amount, 6272. All right, so we've got the utilities expense and we've got the accounts payable. We'll go ahead and add the numbers down. And in this case, we'll get 13,216 for utilities expense and 16,486. So that would be the right hand side. So now we've posted all of our adjusting entries. So once we post all of our adjusting entries to the T accounts or the actual accounts, the general uh, ledger, then we can prepare the adjusted trial balance by using the new balances that we've just calculated throughout these adjusting entries. So here is our adjusted trial balance. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip through these screens that we just did so that we can actually have those accurate numbers and you can see where they come from. Everything else that is in black right now, so all the numbers that are in black do not change with the adjusting entries that we did. Now notice what account also doesn't change. Notice that cash has not changed. Why? Because we said the adjusting entries do not impact cash. And if they don't impact cash, then we wouldn't have expected cash to change throughout the adjustment process. So again, key um, indicator here and in making sure that we understand that cash doesn't is not impacted, so it shouldn't change going from unadjusted to the adjusted trial balance. All right, moving backwards here, uh, going to adjusting entry one, we see that insurance expense is now at 1390 and prepaid insurance is now at 2085. So insurance expense on the left-hand side, so we'll go on the left-hand side. Prepaid insurance is also on the left-hand side, so that will go on the left-hand side as well. So let me go back here. Going to insurance expense, insurance expense is now 1390 on the left-hand side, and prepaid insurance went down to 2085 also on the left-hand side. So now we're just posting them to the adjusted trial bounds. That's all we're doing. It's just a copy job. All right, move into adjusting entry two. We have an accounts receivable 11,600 and a service revenue of 11,600 as well. But we gotta remember that we are going to make one more adjustment here in AJE3. So I'm not gonna post the service revenue just yet because we're not done with that account. So I'm only gonna post my accounts receivable. So my accounts receivable is $11,600 left-hand side, so let's go forward. Accounts receivable is $11,600 on the left-hand side, so we're good there. We're not gonna post the accounts, uh, the sales service revenues yet because we made some changes in adjustment entry three, okay? Going backwards to adjusting entry three now, it looks like we have a deferred revenue that went down to 1080, it's on the right-hand side. And then our service revenue has now completed all the adjustments 
to 14,120 on the right hand side. So moving forward, deferred revenue goes to 1080. So deferred revenue goes to 1080. And then our sales revenue goes to 14,000. 120. So our service revenue goes to 14,120 and deferred revenue goes to 1080. All right, back it up to uh, adjusting entry four here. We've got utility expense that went to 13,216 on the left hand side and the accounts payable went up to 16,486 on the right hand side. So to complete out our adjusted trial balance here, our accounts payable Final balance, 16,486. And our utilities expense is now at, sorry, yeah, utilities expense is now at 13,216. So notice all of the accounts now have a balance. The only thing that's left to do is make sure that we did our work right by adding up our debits, adding up our credits, and making sure they both equal out. So to save us a little time, I get 105. 636, 105, 636, both of them equal each other. So the assumption is that the adjusting journal entries that we did are correct from a numerical standpoint. Now I say that our assumption is correct because we could have done the adjusting entries incorrect and still got a balanced trial balance. So it's important to understand that that might occur uh, where we do the adjusting entry, but we've got it wrong, but yet our balances are still right because um, our debits still equal our credit. So understanding that. So that's how we do the adjusted trial balance. It's not difficult at all. I guess the biggest difficulty would be the adjusting entries. Now, once you have that, you start posting them to the T's and then move the T's to here, and then you're all good. So that is example two on preparing an adjusted trial balance. Hope you enjoyed this example lesson, and we'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, it is Patrick. Don't forget to press the like button and share this video with someone who could get a lot of use from watching this lesson, like maybe a classmate or maybe a friend or maybe just a parent just because you wanted to share this video because you're very excited about what you saw. Share it with someone. And if you want to help us grow and help us make sure that we put the very best in accounting topics out on YouTube, make sure you press the subscribe button and turn on that notification bell. That way you're alerted every time we post videos to this channel. Now, I do this with every one of my classes at the end of class. What did you learn from this lesson? Put that in the comment section below and I'll respond to you on what you got out of this video. So hope you enjoyed this video and we will see you in the next lesson.